Hey guys, welcome back to Tom Spark Reviews. Today we're going to be showing you how to use Viper VPN in detail. If you guys haven't decided to purchase VPN VPN yet, or you decided and interested or purchasing it, click on the link down in the description down below. Help support the channel. Lord of the All right, guys, today we're going to be showing you how to use it. And honestly, I really, really like the layout and look and feel of Viper VPN. I think it's easy and intuitive and it looks good to boot as well. And now, just to be clear, starting off, it is missing some things that might be important to you. It doesn't have a SOX5 proxy. It's also lacking split tunneling and ad blocking features. And it doesn't have a Linux GUI support. Those are some of the bigger things that I kind of remembered from the review, from the Viper VPN review I just did. So if you haven't checked that out as well for a more comprehensive look at Viper VPN, check that out. If those things don't matter to you too much, stay with Viper VPN and keep using it. If you're looking for more features or a more fully fledged, perhaps kind of feature set, including Soxify Proxy, um, some of those things, perhaps check out some of the other reviews in tier one. Um, but just keep in mind that no VPN is perfect and Viper VPN does a pretty good job across the board, even if it is lacking a little bit of these things. Who knows, maybe in the future they will add some of these features. So guys, basically the way Viper VPN works is you have this main page. The main page is cool because you can click on the servers, click on a fastest server, which will connect you to the fastest one, or you can automatically sort it by country, region, or speed. The thing I like about Viper VPN is that it automatically shows the latency of every server right here. There's no need to do a speed test or something like that, like you have to do with ExpressVPN, which is kind of annoying. I like how it's just automatically doing it right here. You could favorite the servers like this, and have them put up here, which makes it a little bit easier to find them. In order to swap geolocations, you could favorite the ones you want, maybe something like Japan, you could favor that. And then um, once you do that, it'll also be up there. So this can be useful for swapping geolocations. And that's pretty much it for the service section. I also like that it has a search bar, not every VPN does. Now we just connect here and it will connect. More options, however, are in the settings here with a customized option. Now, but public Wi-Fi protection is mainly going to be used if you're going in hotspots or something like that. So if you connect to an untrusted network, maybe this is more suited if you're on a laptop. If you're at home, not really worth using or paying attention to, but if you're traveling around with your, your laptop, that's a cool feature to take advantage of. The kill switch is going to prevent any network traffic from leaking. Um, if there's any disconnections or errors like that, and you could configure it as well with a couple more options here. This will deactivate the kill switch when the application quits. So you, if you get rid of Viper VPN and you just want to use no VPN, it's not going to kill your internet. And this kill switch makes it so if you don't have Viper VPN on, you're not going to have any internet on your computer, which ensures you're always staying protective. So that's also a cool feature to configure. We also have the protocol option here, and it's nice to see Viper VPN supporting pretty much every single one, including a nice anti-censorship protocol, which lets you use kind of more stealth VPN or obfuscation or getting around VPN blocks and stuff like that. We also have open VPN and the ability to customize the port, which can also be useful in specific use cases, um, changing ports if you have some blockages or something like that. I would probably recommend using WireGuard since it's the newest and fastest protocol nowadays and kind of the new industry standard um, compared to some of these older options out here. Although IKEV2 and OpenVPN are also very good protocols too. DNS options here lets you use Viper VPN or third party DNS. You could use some kind of ad blocking DNS here to effectively kind of block ads on a DNS level with Viper VPN. I kind of wish they would have preferred to do that, um, but they don't have like an ad blocking DNS specifically like you would see with something like TorGuard, but it is nice to see the customization allowed there. We have automatic reconnect features, which will automatically reconnect if the, the connection is dropped. Some startup connection things to configure how Viper VPN starts up on launch and a little bit of tap adapter stuff to play around with, um, depending on if you're experiencing any issues. But that's about it for Viper VPN. Not too hard to use, right? If you have any comments down below about some of these things that you're not sure about, uh, comment down below and I'll be sure to help you. If you do want to purchase Viper VPN and you haven't decided to yet, check out the full review or click on the link down in the description down below to purchase it. Anyways, guys, see you in the next video very soon.